Welcome to Coffee Culture in the Capital with Sophia and Greg. And I'm Greg. And I'm Sophia. And we have a great list of things to talk to you about today. We are going to look into a teacher, a Christian teacher, who lost her job after refusing to deceive parents. And then we're going to go into some bills on gender identity, mental health treatment, vaccines, education. So stay tuned to get a rundown of all that. But before we get into it, we have two exciting events coming up in almost two weeks now. What I are those know, events? I know, it's coming up quick. Yeah, so what what events do we have coming up? Well, we have the, our gala, a 20th anniversary mm -hmm. gala. We've been around for 20 years, California Family Council, and we are celebrating with a uh, big event uh, here down by the Capitol at the Hyatt um, on a Sunday night, the 5th. And so mm -hmm. if you would still like to come, we have plenty of tickets. Uh, and we have a very fabulous speaker mm -hmm. is flying in. Uh, she's got her own podcast. Yes. And uh, her name is... Allie Beth Stuckey, which I'm super excited. I listen to her daily podcast all the time and keep up with everything she has to say on social media. Yeah, she's, she's just great. on top of it and is on fire for truth. That's right. Big pro-life advocate. So she's not only speaking at our gala... She's coming uh, to the Capitol the very next day on this March 6th for mm -hmm. our annual California March for Life. So that is coming up on March 6th on a Monday uh, on the west side steps of the Capitol. We have events in the morning, um, a prayer event at mm -hmm. 11. We're at 10 o'clock. We're actually going over to an abortion clinic right across yes. the street from the Capitol doing some praying over there. Mm -hmm. um, and then at noon, we have a big rally. Uh, where Ali Beth Stuckey will be speaking along with legislators yes. and we have uh, Lila Rose Lila from Rose Live Action coming. and Pastor John Randall down from Orange County area. Okay. So yeah. we have pastors, legislator. We have some. Um, we have actually a mom who's going to come share her testimony. That's right. So that's going to be really powerful. So it's going to be a great lineup of speakers. It's and then at one o'clock. We're marching all the way around the Campbell Complex. Yes. And uh, we are taking over the streets. They're closing off the streets for us. And we are going to make a public statement about mm -hmm. the God-given value of human life from conception to natural death. Yeah, so it's going to be a great two events. We hope to see you all there. Go ahead and visit our website, californiafamily.org, for more information. But yep. let's just hop right into it. All right. First story we uh, want to bring to your attention uh, the story of somebody, a uh, Christian, who is being particularly brave. Um, the school that she was uh, a teacher at, her name is Jessica Tapia, um, and she worked in a school district down in Southern California called, how do you pronounce it? Jerupa? Jerupa. Yeah. Jerupa Unified School District. Um, she's actually going to be on Tucker Carlson. Mm -hmm. If you type in her name, you'll see it everywhere. But she lost her job. Um, as a PE teacher because of a couple things. She would not allow, uh, in, she's in charge of protecting who comes in and out of the girls' locker room. Mm -hmm. And she would decided she, she just could not allow boys into that locker room. And she was being required to allow boys who identified as girls into the locker room. Um, she was being re required to... Uh, use the preferred pronouns and names of her students, mm -hmm. and that meant she would have to lie about their sex and encourage them w by referring to them as the opposite sex, even when she knew they weren't. And she was supposed to keep all that information secret from parents. Mm -hmm. And she just realized, I can't do this uh, and be a Christian. Uh, her conscience was... Um, affected mm -hmm. <laughs> and she just said, I, I can't do this I can't do this and so she said uh, when she said she couldn't do it they they let her go yeah and so why don't we go ahead and watch this clip oh, of yeah. her so you can kind of hear from her what she has to say on this sounds good the district began investigating me and um, through through that whole um, investigation and there were meetings that were held um, I found out that I was, was being put under directive of having to call students by their preferred pronoun or gender. Um, I also had to lie or withhold that information from their parents. And then um, I also found out, unique to my position as a PE teacher, that I, I have to allow, I was told I need to allow trans students 
into the locker room. I obviously oversee the the female, the girls locker room. And so, you know, that really caught me off guard and I clarified with them, are you, are you telling me I need to let male genitals into the locker room? And they said, yes, um, that it would be discriminating if I didn't, if it was a trans student who, you know, appears, is, is choosing to be a girl, appears like a girl, um, that I would need to allow them in. And so I was very clear with them, if, if the student has male genitals, I'm not letting them in the female locker room. And my district said, that's a whole other issue then because you have to. That was powerful to hear from her and hear from her experience, but also what was encouraging was to hear that she's not gonna listen to man over God. She's putting her faith first. She's putting the safety of children first. That's right. And she was fired for that. But what what is she gonna do now? Well, I mean, now she's she's got help from a Christian legal uh, society called the Pacific Justice Institute, and they are filing gonna file a lawsuit on her mm -hmm. behalf uh, because she was being forced uh, to violate her uh, religious beliefs uh, at school, and schools aren't supposed to do that. Um, mm -hmm. And I just, when I thought of her, I thought, you know, she, she, to me, she's, she's like Rosa Parks, right? I mean, she's being forced uh, to obey a law that was unjust, um, asking her to lie to parents and lie to students. And she just said, you know, I, I can't do this anymore. Um, and just like Rosa Parks, you know, refused to sit in the back of the bus. She, uh, she caused quite a stir, right? Um, but it's that kind of bravery that is needed uh, to stand up against the unjust laws. So, yes, good you, for her. Yeah, you got to, when it comes to children and their safety and doing what's right, you have to stand up for that. So keep her in your prayers as she goes through court and starts going through all this. Pray for a good outcome. Pray just for safety and for her to also have peace throughout all this because if, Hopefully, she gets a good outcome and more teachers will feel bold enough to stand up for the well, children. Well, it's already happening. I mean, we are already getting calls from mm -hmm. other teachers who mm -hmm. are in the same exact situation. And they said, you know, I, I am not going to refer to a boy as a girl. That's child abuse. Mm -hmm. um, and so how, how can you help me? How can you prepare me? So we're getting all kinds of calls. So her bravery is uh, resulting in other teachers willing to do the same thing. So that's great. Yeah. Well... Let's go ahead and dive into some bills that have been introduced. So what do you want to kick us off with? Well, this is um, this week or whenever you see this podcast, um, the 17th of February is when all the bills have to be introduced um, and get numbers. And so they are introducing bills by the hundreds every single day. And so there's some really bad bills that have been introduced this last week. And so I just want to highlight a few of them. Um, and we're going to start with uh, a bill called uh, ACA, which is uh, Assembly Constitutional Amendment 5. Um, so this is a bill that's going to add a constitutional, uh, change the Constitution of California. Um, and what it's doing, it's not adding anything, it's actually removing um, a constitutional amendment that was passed uh, quite a while ago, I think it was 2000. Five mid two thousands is called Prop Eight. Now, if you know what Prop Eight was, it was the constitutional amendment that California passed by I think fifty two percent of the population here in California said that marriage should be a union between one man and one woman. Of course, you know what happened with the Supreme Court overturning that uh, uh, the will of the people and mandating that marriage be redefined to include same sex couples. So that happened because of the Supreme Court, but. Um, we still, in our, our Constitution, still have that language that says man, marriage is between a man and a woman. And they want to remove that. Uh, they say it's a, a stain on our Constitution. Of course, we don't believe that. California Family Council was part of the uh, coalition of groups that asked the, 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 uh, the people of California to put in its Constitution that marriage was going to be defined mm -hmm. as how it has always been defined how the Bible defines it, and many other religions define it as one man and one woman. And so uh, so we're going to be uh, dealing with that this year um, mm -hmm. as we're going to uh, talk about marriage again. So uh, they're going to be using, the, using it to promote 
gay marriage, mm -hmm. same-sex marriage, and we're going to be standing up for uh, biblical marriage um, as the best best way that people can be fruitful and multiply, obviously, but mm -hmm. fulfill a fulfilling life. And so we're going to be defending that for this whole year um, as this comes before you, because you all be have to, you all be needing to vote on it mm -hmm. come November, because it's going to be on the ballot if it makes it that far. Yes, so stay tuned for more information on that. We'll continue to update you guys what happens. And again, we're most likely going to see this on the ballot. So make sure you're informed and make sure you stay true to the Christian truth that marriage isn't between a man and a woman. That's right. So next we have AB 957. Yes, uh, this is a concerning bill uh, dealing with gender identity. It's been introduced by uh, Assembly Woman uh, Lori Wilson. Uh, Lori Wilson is the only member of the Assembly who has a, at least publicly, has announced that they she has a transgendered identified child, mm -hmm. um, and she's introduced a bill uh, telling courts um, it's a uh, a bill to require that courts, when they're having custody determinations, mm -hmm. um, either in a divorce or any other type of uh, proceeding where custody is being determined or visitations being mm -hmm. determined, that uh, the court should uh, favor the parent who affirms a kid's transgender identity and disfavor the parent who refuses to call the child by a preferred pronoun um, or the child's new announced name. And so this is really an assault on parental rights. Mm -hmm. It's an assault on, on Christian parents. Um, you know, your kid uh, wants to transition and you want to object, the state is now against you and is willing to remove your own parental rights if you get before a judge uh, deciding uh, who has custody. So that's a super, super concerning bill. This is uh, AB 957. Yes, and as soon as we have the committee hearing dates for this bill, we'll make sure to keep you all informed. We'll let you know who's in the committee. And again, right now on the podcast, we're just kind of trying to update you guys on what bills have been introduced. That's right. But follow along on our social media, follow along on our website to get more information about what you can do about these bills. That's right. So here's another bill. Uh, it's AB 665. Um, now, this bill was regarding uh, mental health care. Um, that minors can consent to without their parents. Um, there's a lot of mental health care currently that minors can consent to once they turn age 12, uh, but there's some, there's some limitations. A child either has to ha uh, have um, a, uh, has accused their parents of child abuse or incest. Mm -hmm. That would allow them to choose to have uh, a counseling without the parental consent. Or if the child is a threat, uh, they're threatening their physical um, bodies, or it's more or less if they're suicidal, right? Mm -hmm. If a child's suicidal, then they can get counseling, and so without parental consent. Those two things are now going to be taken away, and if this bill passes, as long as the person giving the counsel thinks the child is, you know, mature enough, they're going to be able to get their own counseling. And which means not only will they get outpatient counseling all by themselves, they also be able to go to a residential treatment center all by themselves. So they can be, uh, who knows what exactly that means, but we know it's, you know, a parent, uh, a child can, if, especially if they think they're transgender, right, uh, they, and they want mental health care that affirms their transgender identity, they can be, decide to go away from their parents and be put in a, uh, a residential home. Um, so that's super concerning. Mm -hmm. And then the next one we have is AB 1078, right. and it was introduced by Assemblymember Corey Jackson. So do you want to dive in a little bit on this one? Yes, this is really uh, taking away parental rights, or mm -hmm. local school board's rights to determine what kind of books are in their libraries, uh, what kind of curriculum is being taught. This bill will require that the, um, the uh, State Board of Education actually has to approve any school district that removes books or curriculum from uh, from being seen by their kids. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, just think of all the school districts that recently have banned CRT, critical mm -hmm. race theory. Um, that's now, if this bill passes, that is going to have to be approved. 
uh, by a state board of education, which is all appointed by the governor mm -hmm. and other, uh, you know, political officials. They're not elected, an elected body, uh, at least not directly. So I'm not sure they're really trying to take away the authority local school districts have to decide what kids learn on their own. You know, they're rebelling against all these parents who are coming to school board meetings and reading the pornographic material they find in their libraries. It, it's unbelievable. So that's a terrible bill. Yeah, this is this is going to be an important one for parents to really call in about and right. to try to get to try to stop it because ultimately right now parents have the ability to go to their school boards and talk to them about why are my students having this curriculum being taught to them? Why are these books in our library? Absolutely. Why are these, like you said, it is, there's pornographic books in these libraries that the students have access to. And, but they build good relationships with the school board members sometimes and they're able to then kind of make a difference. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a plenty of school board uh, flipped from liberal to conservative this mm -hmm. last election um, for the very reason the parents didn't like what was being, the kids were being taught. Mm -hmm. So a bill like this kind of obliterates that. Yes. So need to fight it. Yes. And then next we have AB 659, and this is the vaccine bill we mentioned earlier. Yeah, vaccine bill. So, you know, um, Senator Pan, who's now retired, um, has been trying for years, trying to add the number of, of vaccines uh, that kids are required to take to go to public school and mm -hmm. private school. Um, he's systematically uh, removed parents uh, from opting their kids out. Um, so this particular bill adds a new vaccine that will be required in order to attend school. It's a vaccine called the uh, HPV vaccine. Um, and I know it's kind of a very controversial uh, vaccine for mm -hmm. years that many parents didn't want their kids to take. Uh, it, it really only affects those kids who are sexually active um, and could get some form of cancer mm -hmm. um, from a particular uh, a virus um, this, this vaccine is supposed to deal with. But many parents don't uh, g give their kids this, but now they're going to be required before eighth grade. Um, uh, and so... Yeah, so another huge issue with forcing uh, vaccines that parents don't want. And there's no way to opt out. Um, you can get a medical exemption, but the mm -hmm. state's got to approve the medical exemption. So anyway. Yeah, so and then next we have SB 385. And this is... This is actually surprisingly the only abortion bill we'll be talking about today. There today, yeah. is already a large list of abortion bills um, out, and we'll make sure to inform you all on them. But um, SB 385, it was introduced by Senator Tony Atkins. And if you want to give us a little yeah, rundown. Yeah, Senator Tony Atkins is the, uh, the leader of the Senate. Mm -hmm. um, she used to be an abortion clinic uh, director down in the San mm -hmm. Diego area. Um, and she has introduced another bill to lower the uh, standards for abortionists. Um, she's systematically allowed over the years nurses and nurse practitioners um, to do abortions. And now she wants to include physician assistants. Uh, they can do first trimester abortions too, right? Um, so it's just a further, the, the thing is they have a shortage of abortion doctors mm -hmm. and people willing to do abortions in California. Um, so they keep expanding the, the medical professions that's allowed to do an abortion. So uh, another concerning bill, obviously, uh, abortions done by a physician assistant is going to be more dangerous than one done by a, uh, a doctor. Um, but it's always, obviously, <laughs> dangerous for the child. Yes. You know. So anyway, so that's, that's, one of the, that's a SB 385. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's all the bills we have to go over today. Yeah. But it's kind of interesting. If you look at the list of bills that we went through, all of them target the nuclear family, whether it's targeting parental rights, whether it's targeting marriage, whether it's targeting, like, birth, abortion, the last one we talked about. Yeah. And that's just something we need to continue to fight for, especially at California Family Council. We know biblically what a family is and what a family should look like right. and yet here in um here in sacramento they keep trying to target the family so we need to stay on top of that 
We need to That's oppose right. bills that target the family, and yeah. Yeah, so I mean, loving your neighbor means standing up against bills like this because these bills are going to harm your neighbor, right? As the family unit breaks down, so does society breaks down. Mm -hmm. You know, civilization breaks down, right? Strong families are the foundation of civilizations, and so mm -hmm. all these bills are attacking that. So yeah. loving your neighbor, stand up. Yes, and even though some of these topics are controversial, yeah. but as a Christian, to let someone continue to live in sin or not live in truth, that's not how you love someone. To no. love someone is to encourage them and let them know about truth and to not let them live in sin. So just keep that in mind as we're fighting against these bills and remember you're doing it because you love them. That's right. All right. Well, we will see you all next week and then hopefully we'll see you in person in two weeks at the gala and the March for Life. See you there.